it's another day we are here with a lot of excitement of something new. When you find the old that have a lot of passion about the young people, you may wonder what that means. But it is a treasure to have an old person with the heart of helping young people. And today, I have not only a friend, but a grandfather that has found great inspiration to chat with young people. He found my magazine, he read what you have done, and he has invited me to have a chat. And here we want to bring to you, and hear what he has, and what he's planning to do with the young people. Welcome, and tell us who you are, so that we can hear and share your dream. Yes, I'm Godfrey Karioki. My parents were the first founders of Catholic Church here at Kahiti. Now my interest is just to help the young people because the, the very faith which they were um, they educated with, it seems as it has been distorted. That's the reason why I decided to gather young men and women from colleges and universities to form an association to help themselves. I have uh, requested the government to help them, to empower them economically. That is my interest. Because I want or uh, I wish them to be good parents, young, um, as uh, young men and women, we know they will marry and what they will produce will help our faith. We have, it is our tradition and our custom and our belief as a Kikuyu to care for the unborn. Godfrey, you have a great passion that I really want you to come back and tell us, first of all, how was your young age? What did you gain that has made you to look back then and compare it with now for you to have such a mission? I have been born and bred as a Catholic. My parents were Catholic and they are Catholic. I was educated in St. Paul Seminary for three years in primary school. That in the seminary, I met a lot of uh, uh, educated people. Like late Bishop Emilio, who died through accident. Father Gitonga, who is retired now. And, and Father Hilary Wambogo. Our father Kenyari, I was educated in the seminary, I die know. But I was dis dismissed from seminary because of uh, my weakness in Latin. I was very poor in Latin. Therefore, the church could not really retain a candidate who is not able to master Latin. What type of priest could you make? Therefore, when I left the seminary in 1959, I was taken by um, politicians, those who had come from detention camps. When I asked them to help me for the education, because I was just in standard eight, I remember one with the former MP of Mokoroini. He told me, no, don't be worried. I am going to help you to stand the Latin. And I'm going to introduce you to Rabbit Resort. And you see the exams through London University. That's what he did. So I learned, I was educated through correspondence, London University. And I became a teacher, a level teacher, P1 teacher. And even now I'm just going on. And the Latin is not my problem now. Yeah. I look at what you are saying, especially the challenge that you had in life 
and in your early choice of life to become a seminarian only to be discontinued because of weakness, weakness in, in Latin. Latin. I tell you, it wasn't easy <laughs> even in our time, but you know, sometimes it's the grace of God. I love the positive attitude you had after you still took it up, developed that positive attitude, you went to seek for help, you have been helped yes, to become yes. a master of Latin, as you have said. Yes. You know, the other day I saw you with some books of Latin and I was like, what kind of old man is this? Yeah, that's the point. So that is what made you to go yes. into yes. study of Latin yes. to prove that uh, now you understand? Yes, I can help my people. You can help your people? Yes. Also, you can understand some things. Yes. Now, tell me, we are in a world where young people, when they are discouraged or disappointed, they give up. What kind of relationship can you bring to their lives and what message would you have for them? Well, I just learned through politicians that there was Mao 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 was not a Kikuyu custom. It was not a Kikuyu oath. It was a British, it was a colonial. And I'm going to give for you um, a book to prove that it was a, a colonial. It was that type of oath our youth, our people were introduced to atheism and all kind of dirty things which you are seeing. According to the Kikuyu uh, theocracy, we cannot deny God. Trying to educate our youth. That's the reason why I'm learning Latin, so that I might know, they might know exactly their ideology, not to rely on foreign ideology. Yeah. Now, we are also in an age where people think that uh, whenever we go out there, we can pick every ideologies that we have or any information that we find either on the books, on the magazines, or on the internet. And now you're telling us you want to trace the values in the tradition, yes. belief, especially based in the Kikuyu culture. Yeah. Why do you think there is something special with the Kikuyu culture? It's because wa Kikuyu, as I have learned so far as I have they ha it seems, or oh, there's likelihood, they, are, they have got the similarity of Jews. They have got the same tradition, the way of adoring God, their way of worship, like Jews. Why should we be, our custom be distorted by following ideology? You are talking about the British oath that was translated to Mau Mau oath. Can you tell us more about this oath? How, if you can uh, tell us what it is and elaborate on it? According to the Kikuyu custom, oath cannot be taken by women and children. It is a taboo. But the colonialists introduced through their ways, they introduced it to our young people, to women. You see, it is a very dangerous thing. Yeah. What was it? Do you have the wording, what they used to say when they were taking an oath, at what age they were, and what was the consequence they of it? They were, the oath which was being taken, it was denying God, praying. Go to sacraments, conv uh, conversion, which is not our custom. We keep us according to the, our culture. We do confess, even before the missionaries came. It is a way of conversion. Worship, like Jews, they were doing. That's the reason why I want our, our youth to go back to our custom. We know about Mugumo tree and sometimes yes, we have yes. heard of it. Tell us something about it. Mugumo, it's a sacred tree. It is a sacred where our people are going 
to worship a God, to request him to come to their assistance when they are in difficulty, when they want to thank God. That's the way. That's the shrine. So yes. Mogumo tree, wherever it came up, it signifies the yes. presence of God. Yeah, presence of God. I remember what happened in Palestine in 12 or 4 when the lay people too from Europe went to Mount Carmel yes. and at the caves yes. where a writer used mm -hmm. to go and pray or meet God and there they started talking about looking for solitude and in solitude and loneliness they found a space to be with their God and now you are relating it in this case what exactly you used to do before the colonial period where people could go to a Mugumo tree or yes. a sacred places yes. to give thanks to God or to request anything from God. That's the point. That's the reason why I had gone last year. 2019, I had gone to Holy Land as my interest was to check, to make sure Kiku custom way of praying or it just the same with the Israelites. I went to Carmelites and I saw, we were told, and I was very happy about it. That's the reason why I'm convinced. That's the reason why I'm requesting you, you missionaries, Carmelites, to come to help our, our youth, though we are going to help ourselves. And that's what you want to talk about, uh, when you talk about spirituality, or belief system. We realize that a belief system is some truths that are held by people, especially from their background, which tradition is very key. And when you talk about faith, is where we develop our belief system in the love of God and mercy of God that God will to reconcile the whole world to himself through our Lord Jesus Christ. Young people may be looking for other ways of life today. Where we may find them getting attached to groups or to ideologies, as you have indicated earlier, but without the background, the truths in it. And that makes them lose the right focus they would want to have in life. So, in this kind of association already you have formed, you know and you have already gotten the intervention of the government to empower them. Yes, yes. Why did you think that the empowerment spiritually was key? It is key. It is the, the foundation of winning nation. Because according to the Kikuyu, there is a belief that we have to maintain virginity. We Kikuyu custom, as we know, sometimes we talk about, each, uh, about celibacy, but to a Kikuyu, we don't recognize wholly celibacy as essential for connection of God. We know what is chastity. Chastity and virginity. According to the Kiku custom, we have to care and to educate young girls for virginity and the youth to retain their chastity because the day when they will come to marry, it is between them and the God. Three, God first, Father, mother, they will produce a child. And that's what we are missing now. That's the reason why I'm trying to help them. I want somebody, I want a body to come and assist us to talk about chastity and virginity. That's the reason why consulate of others, they came here in 1902. And by, 19, by 1914, they had found seminary for priests. Simply because Akikuyu 
community. They have got signs. It is a God-given sign. They know this child, this boy, will become a medicine man. This young girl will come, will become a senior wife of a family. So they joined with the consulate of others and the sisters and they formed seminary for youth to become medicine men spiritually. 1918 they formed Mary Market for girls. And that's how we, we, we grew. We, we have got so many priests before emergence who are very firm because they were murdered by uh, missionaries and the elders. You see, now after emergence, we got foreign ideas, foreign ideologies. Our, 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 what, uh, our faith has been distorted. Now who is going to help us? If you, are go, if you stay away, that's the reason why I'm asking you, you Camerites, come join with the, the other priests here. We form, we go back where we were. We produce Bishop Gatimu and many others who were there before the emergence. That's in my prayer. I would want to say something on what you have just said. The concept of virginity and chastity. Yes. The church teaches rightly. Yes. Chastity is a call to be faithful. Yes. In fact, I'm writing a book on three options for the Catholic Church. That you are called first to be a family man yeah. or woman. Then we have consecrated life. If you are not for that, if you choose to be single, it is because you have said you can be a medicine person or you can do other things in life as a human person committed to be faithful in your state of life and serving God. Virginity is also something treasured from the old tradition, and you have rightly said it is treasured by the Kikuyu yes. tradition. Yes. Why we are finding the new challenge today with the young people is that lack of consciousness yes. that lack. of what virginity yes. and faithfulness yes. is. Yes. And I want to tell you one thing. You can never pay for something that you don't have a picture of it or a promise about it. Look at what uh, happened in those days, and I want you to maybe to clarify on, on it. If one was found to have uh, a baby before or gotten pregnant before marriage, how were they treated? in the cultural background. Such a lady who has got a child and she is not married, she could not be married by a boy, no, a youth who is not married. Most probably she could remain at her parents' home or else she would be married by a man who was married with a second wife or third wife. So you are trying to say during the old times there was deeper discipline yes. on how to guide young people yes. to make the right choice. Yes. Because when you say if you were found to be pregnant yeah. or you have impregnated yeah. somebody before, you were not to be married by a young no. man. Today we lack such a instructions, yeah. especially from yes. the families. Yes. yes. And as we know, the church teaches. The family is the smallest cell. Yes. Now, it is in that family, we want to go back the way you have said, what you were instructed in the family. We build. It is then the high time. We want to look at what you are trying to say, based on the family life, to go and start cultivating these disciplinary measures to grow young people, yes. being conscious of what they expect in yes. life. They have the vision of their life. They have the picture of their life. They have the promise of life. So that if they are ready to pay for the price, 
I guess we are going to go back to that disciplinary measures, to that commitment in life, to that faithfulness. Because today, there's so much can go right when you have parents, friends, people of goodwill instructing you. And there is so much that can go wrong when you have strangers coming to you, telling you of something that may look so good, but may not be trustworthy. Now tell me, with the new foundation you have come up with, what do you think that should be done as the start for the change of the mindset of these young people? Well, I have tried to make research the which we are facing now, the problem of the youth. First, we need very strong religious people and lay people to unite, to go back to our custom. For example, have you read that book of Father Merafiki? Um, Dine, Dine, um, have you? Not yet. I am going to give you. Thank you. I have done it. If you check that uh, book of uh, Gishandi, this Gishandi, it ori its original is from Egypt. As a reason why I'm listening that Akikuyu have got a lot of uh, Euro, um, Jews and uh, Egyptians. You see number 109 is speaking about virginity, that there's no girl who can be married if she is not a virgin. That's one point. The other point, you check, have you read that book of Jomo Kenyatta, Facing Mount Kenya? Not yet. Not yet. I am going to give you. Thank you. Number 263. No, that one, uh, sorry, that one is talking about the, the power of the cross. That means Akikuyu had known the cross. They had known about Jesus before the missionaries came. You are going to see it at page 263, the power of the cross. Wakikui had known what, who was Jesus. The other point is the chastity. Chastity. Jomo Kenyatta is speaking in his book, which I'm going to, to hand you, about um, this magic of uh, uh, Moreria. Do you know what Moreria was? No, what is that? Me, mean? Let me explain you. Please do. <laughs> According to the Kikuyu, you know young people yeah. wanted to, uh, to, have, to be in the company of young girls. To, if you are not uh, uh, good with the relationship of, go, of, of girls, it seems, uh, uh, by then it seems as you are not uh, really uh, okay. But, but, though you are in their company, you must be very careful with the sex. But, there were, I'm going to show you afterwards, you are going to read it, but, there were young people who were only too lazy. They wanted to help the company of, of girls. But they did not want it to work. Why? Do you know the reason why? I don't know. They were going to seek the help of medicine men through the devil. Spirits of medicine men. And they were remaining without marriage. And they were, they were hated by everybody. That's the reason why I'm telling you. To a Kikuyu, you cannot confuse a real Kikuyu that if you are not married, you are single, you are, you are, pe you are, you are pure. Never. You might, you might not be married and you are full of sins taboos. So what they want is chastity. I'm going to show you. Jomo Kenyatta has explained a lot. So that is the reason why we need to educate our youth. 
I have spoken to them or with them often, and they are very good. Father, I tell you, they are, they are only too good. They have good confidence. But this is a problem. They don't have anybody to help them. They are just like uh, that man who was uh, in uh, Jerusalem when uh, uh, he was waiting to go to the poor so that he might be healed. And he had nobody to heal him till the, our Lord came and helped him. That's how our people, our youth are. They are crying because they don't have anyone to help them spiritually. Yeah? And as you have said, education, if it has to make impact in the young people, is to make sure that we pull the best yes, yes. out of the young people. Yes, they have got it. And what you have rightly said, and many people, even research has shown, managing sexual energy is one way to have a visionary or yes. to focus on great things. Yes. I love what you have said, that those who were engaged in sex, they had nothing to do. Nothing! So nothing. they wasted their energy sleeping with women yeah. or free. Yes. And this distracted them for having serious focus on life choices. Yeah. This is why we need them to be cautious and work on how to help also young people manage well their sexual energy. Yes. And the, the way you said from the tradition of the Kikuyus that if somebody was seen to be pregnant before marriage, they would lose to be married by a young person. Yeah. That was a very tough discipline. But also we need to come to this age we are in, we say something that young people need to know. Without self-control, there is no much greatness one can achieve in life. Nothing. It takes one person realizing something greater than the moment. Because more often, the immediate gratification kills the bigger dream. The patience to work continually to realize what they would want to achieve in life. I support you and I support your thinking that we need to talk about faithfulness. But you know what? I've always believed that there is wisdom that coming from the old. And here you are. Now we want to put it to the young people and they be ready to buy the idea that it's not only about having sexual relationship, but it's committing themselves beyond the immediate gratification. And that's why we want to talk about making the right choices on what to be done and what should not be done and did the time is right. And that is what they will need to focus on. If they want to be married, they need to resolve, they need to focus, they need to treasure their future dream. Yes. If they want to be priests or religious men and women, they also need to have the same discipline. It's great to appreciate the fact that no great person who can come through an obstacle without self-discipline. Going back to what you told us about your seminary life, when you were dismissed because of Latin, you went back and got a sponsorship, you did that Latin and you love it up to now. Yes. Can you tell us some phrases of Latin that you remember and uh, translate them? Oh, Latin? Yes. Um, of course, you are learned. Mm -hmm. You know Julius Caesar. Yes. I you know, know Julius Caesar. Yeah. Do you remember what uh, he said? That Veni, Vindi, Vici. I came, I saw, and I conquered. The same proverb is the one which I am going to apply to you. Now you have come. I have told you the problem which you are facing. Now, are you going to conquer? Wow. What a challenge. Veni, Vindi, Vici. Now, Father Dennis, you, we are with you. You have come. You have seen, have I sprint. 
Now, are you ready to conquer this tea? I can tell you we are ready for that. But one thing I know, your dream and my dream and with anywhere wishes around us, we are going to conquer. Okay. One thing we should be always be reminded, a dream that is already shared has got the highest possibility of being actualized. So we want to be grateful to you for having this dream and this focus of saving our young generation. But still we need you, we need those resourceful information, we need you to sit with them, tell them what you saw also, mm -hmm. and what you have lived through, and why you would tell them that this is a sure way they can walk. That's what we mean, their spiritual pathway. In fact, as comrades we are told, the way of prayer is the royal road. And that's why today, then we want to go with, to these young people with this understanding. They need to realize something about themselves. But Father, let me ask you. Our youth have been uh, misled. I think the problem which we are having and which you are going to cure, to cure is uh, the saying of Romans. Damnati quod non interiguti. Because they condemn what they don't understand. It's indeed our duty now to make them understand what they should understand. And I believe that is exactly what me and you we are going to engage. Engaging in letting them, not condemning yeah. them also for not understanding. Yeah but understanding that they don't understand, yes. so that working on their side, we enlighten them. Yes. We engage them, we listen to them, and we give them opportunity yes. to tell us what they think, so that in the process of sharing our experiences, every moment we meet them, we get to a point of influencing their thoughts. That's why the saying is right. Show me your friends yes. and I'll tell you who you yes. are. Today we are here talking about young people. I'm sure it's because you have read what I'm doing. And I thank you for that. We sit here, we want to share some insights that are really passionate from in our lives with the hope that it's going to change the lives of many young people. Recently I was... Uh, reading some works of uh, Titus Pransma, who says about mysticism, that is a union of God and man. When God comes in our lives, he strengthens us with his presence. And it is his presence that makes us to grow out to our proper relationships. When I talked about our young people need self-knowledge, it is when we call them to take a post in life, to listen to their hearts, and to ask themselves what they desire in life. The way you desire to become a priest, to study Latin, to understand more about the Catholic faith, you never gave up, even when you left no, the no. seminary. Never. It is the same way we believe and hope our young people out there, when we will share with them this inspirational information, they will pick it up, they will leave it up. If also we keep ways of churning with them, and this is the start of it. The same way we cannot wish to count the chicks before they are hatched, but we trust that the information, the empowerment that we are going to start, it's going to trigger them, slowly. Yes. anything great, let me assure you, Godfrey, it will take time. Of course. You know very well now I that you've read some history of the church. No, no. Rome was not built on one know. day. I know. Now, the same dream you have, I want you, even if it takes us 100 years, we want to get great people yes. with great heart for the young people and ask them to join hands 
in talking with the young people. Like the way we are talking, I'm learning so much. And I appreciate it. It is the same belief we look forward to these young people that they would appreciate what you are sharing. They are ready. They are good. You are saying they are, they are good. good. And I love good. the way you are already positive about them. Tell us some of the things you have done with them that you really show their readiness to learn. Well, there was a time when uh, I started uh, another group uh, to keep pitch. I fish down here, there is a, a, a small dam. I did it, but finally, though they have, they have got a lot of fish over there, just near here, yet they don't have any mentor, even in government officers, because they are, the government officers, the government is ready, but they don't have anyone who can mentor them to get the foundation to know how they are, to see their future. See, I've got that experience. And that's, uh, that's the area I'm telling about. Sometimes there is this way of looking at, at reality. You talked about the man who was in Bethsaida. Yes. Who kept complaining when Christ asked, do you want to be healed? What did the man say? Yes. Yes, no uh, one is there yes, to nobody. put me in. Yeah, that's the situation with your now, youth. I want, as we develop this attitude, as we move to help young people, they need to start helping themselves. Oh, yes. They need to start believing in themselves. Yes. They need to start learning from others. So the only transformation we expect in these young people is when we are going to engage them to own the process, to own Yes. To make a big sacrifice and be ready to leave it. I've done it with several people. I've written a book about the cry of the young people where I say many young people are crying because they don't understand what's happening in their lives. Yes. In that book, I have simple steps to guide them. I tell the young people, first realize what is happening around your mm -hmm. life. When you realize it, then you are able to seek alternatives. You know when there is a problem, one thing I want to tell you, Godfrey, you can't keep talk, uh, talking about the problem. You need, at certain moment, change your mind and focus on the alternatives. And this way I want to ask you, apart from the fishery that you have been doing, what other alternatives do you think we can engage these young people? Uh, currently? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, currently they can... Uh they can start uh, pig keeping, pottery, and uh, they can uh, start uh, uh, rabbit keeping. This is what exactly we want then, when we bring this to these young people and get people who can fund and yes. collect this yes. product from them, they will easily focus their energy. We are not going to keep talking about why they are misbehaving because it's obvious they have nothing to do. They are idle. Now, if they are idle, we want to engage them. Yes. We want to work with them as they go to keep pottery, yes. as they go to yeah, do rabbits or big. Yes. And now, that is exactly we need always also to have in the back of the mind. If they invest their energy well in doing some activities together, they even learn from each other. Yes. We also have great materials. We would want them to create times where we speak to them. When we tell them some techniques of self-knowledge, self-awareness, increasing their skills. And some of these skills that are, maybe I want to check with you, before you got them to do some of these activities. What skills do you think that they need to be taught for them to be ready to take up the responsibility in life? Techniques. Where they can learn carpentry, brick making, or whatever it is building. I think they, they are encouraged to join uh, these technical schools. They can be helped here out. Because we want them, the church to realize now we are in the, the age of problems. We have to face these problems 
eh, in such a way. You know, Kato, in Rome, eh, destructo Kadago, destroy Kadage. Let us now destroy the system which is hindering the youth now. We start working. Therefore, you are saying you are keeping building the network yes. over yes. this youth empowerment. Yes. And I want to trust this. I've learned this principle. If you lead your thoughts, you will reach where you want. Yes. And as study has shown, whatever you can see, you can attain it. I see a bright future of young people taking responsibility of their lives. I see great people coming, joining hands to support the wellness of the young people, both morally, spiritually, and even materially. We want them to keep in the future discussions on how we can guide our young people, make the right choices concerning their upbringing, concerning their search for wealth and their spiritual growth. We want to be grateful for today for your sharing and the input that you have put and above all showing much interest in working with the young people. At your age, I wish to live to reach such an age with great passion to pass on the right information to the young people. I guess you have never had it difficult because having the background of being a teacher. 33 years. 33 years as a teacher. Yes. Tell us, what did you like, especially when you were teaching? Well, you know, how we have, uh, we have got a lot of uh, experience. But the thing which, we, which makes me proud now about my work is... Uh, a few students whom I tried to coach privately, and now I see they are able to support themselves. And again, as I was teaching, I am happy that uh, I tried to introduce a small Christian community within our, our school. There was a time when uh, I think uh, some of our, our teachers uh, took me as a, a hardcore, and I was transferred to PCA school. I stayed there for about four years or five years, within Protestant schools, and I learned a lot. I enjoyed that uh, I am able now to speak. I know the problems of uh, um, youth who are educated in the Protestant churches and the Catholic. So. I know. Now I'm 82. 82. Yes. 82. Congratulations for turning 82. Yeah. And we look for many more years from yeah. you sharing mm -hmm. these great insights. But before we end up this, you have said all this. Tell us about your own family background and how did you find it bringing up your own children? What can you talk about that? If you are not well founded, Father, it is not simple. I am lucky and I thank God for my father. As I'm going to show you the picture, my father was one of the carriers during the First World War. And she was in Tanganyika. And, she, and he was working with Blessed Sister Irene. You remember her? Mm -hmm. Yes. Blessed Sister Irene. Yeah. Other. And most of the education, the foundation, it is, my father took it from, she was educated by that sister. And another uh, consulate father who was known as Father Gaudesio Panarate, they were with him in Tanzania. So I have learned a lot about it. It was Father, Father, uh, by, uh, Pandarate and the sister, the blessed it now, who helped my father to form the foundation of Catholicism. Instead of wasting money in Tanganyika, 
he was instructed by Sister Irene to give Father Panati, who was coming here at Kaheti, some money to bring to his father. That's what he did. And as his father took the money, he bought some goods. So when he came, he said that he cannot marry any girl who is outside the church. So he married my ma mother, who was in the church by then. Am I not benefiting from Sister Irene and missionaries? Right. So about the family life, it is from the very foundation of missionaries. I want, you know, I am 82 now. I don't have many years. But I want to, to, to leave a, a legacy, the one which will be followed by our children, and especially by clergymen, hierarchy. I, want, I would like them to follow the founders, consulate of others. Do you know what they were doing? Pedibus, calicalibus. Pedibus, calicalibus. They were walking mountains during the rains. They did not have big cars as you have. You have to be challenged now. Why don't you keep this car here and then walk, you, you visit the old people as they were doing? That's how I'm challenging now. And even young people, I'm challenging them. You have to walk, visit the old people, the sick, the young people. You know, Father, we have got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Thank you, Godfrey. That is a very big challenge. And I promise you, I'm going to get into it. I'm <laughs> going to take that extra mile. And I have already started. Okay. Because your dream is going to be my dream. And because at every moment I believe this, if you have a willing heart, oh, yes. you are ready to make a difference. Yeah. And the best difference, as you have said, is to contribute to the well-being of someone. It is this understanding we want to create that in taking care of the young people with their challenges, we help them to picture out what they expect in the future, then they will be ready to pay the price. It is what we want to encourage you as young people out there. Never hesitate to take that step. Move, do what you can. Change your life. Know this as what we have heard from Godfrey. Virginity and faithfulness, that is chastity, is going to make you to become a standout. Yes. Why did this old man decide to share with us this kind of values? It's because he has seen them produce fruits. And we want them to produce fruits in your life. Never want to waste your energy when you are young. Make use of the time you have. Build your life. And with the grace of God, attain the best of you. May God give you many years. And we look forward to continue this conversation. Thank you. And me too. I wish you Basi hapa tunaye mama ambaye wameishi siku nyingi na mse Godfrey. Na tungependa tuambie chinsi ambayo wameshirikiana katika maisha yao ya ndoa na ni yapi ambayo wameyafanya hadi sasa hivi kama mke na mume na anachangia namna gani katika ndoto ya mmewe. Karibu. Asante, Father. Kwa majina naitwa Teresa Joki 
God peka liuki kamole. Nilikuja hapa 1974. Ala kwa sababu alikuwa na mama wa watoto akamwaga dunia. Akaniuliza kwa heshima nije nimsaidie kwa sababu watoto walikuwa wadogo. Alikuwa na miezi saba. Nikamwambia mimi si kutoka kwa utawa ndije niolewe. Sitaki hiyo maneno. Lakini fala anaitwa Father Hilary. Akaniambia hata wakati ulikuwa kwa convent ulikuwa ukifanya kazi ya mioyo kuja umsaidie kwa sababu yule mtoto ni mdogo atalewa na nani nikasikia hiyo neno alafu nikaja kachukua huo mzigo na nilikuta baba yake na mama yake walikuwa wazee kabisa nilikuwa ni kama watoto wanne baba yake na mama yake na wale watoto wa tatu. Yule baba yake akaniambia hata sisi tu watoto wako nikamwambia baba niobe niweze kufanya mzuri niweze kwa fanyia mnavyotaka. Mama yake hata nikamwambia kutoka leo sitaki wede kwa shaba hiyo kazi nitafanya na tulifanya tukakaa nika fadha fadha akonsorata mmoja anaitwa mjano akaniambia na kuomba uje mission ya kitito utusaidie kwa sababu masista wa konsorata walieda nikamwambia siwezi kwa sababu tuna watoto na wase na mama na baba ni wase akanioba kwa heshima akaniambia uje nikauliza bwana bwana akasema eda ukafanye kazi pamoja na watoto tukaenda yule misheni ya kitito nikakaa miezi ine na yeye yule bwana yangu alikuwa akija kila jumamosi weekend Arafu akarudi Jumapili jioni. Kule misheni nilifanya kazi. Hata nilikuwa na wazee na wanawake na wasichana na vijana wa Catholic Action. Hiyo nikatimiza. Arafu nikaoba Father Bauden na Ruhusa nikuje nirudi nyumbani kwa sababu baba na mama wanaseeka akaitikia nikaja nikachukua hiyo mzigo kaendelea hiyo tukafanya alafu serikali ikasema ikiwa ni hivyo hata si wakaoba waka mzee wakasema waka wanataka nifanye kazi kwa kuwa kansora nikawa hapo miaka tano na nilikuwa nikisaidia vijana wale hawawezi watoto wazazi wa, wa wao wakiseeka sasa wakati huu ninaona bwana yangu anafanya kazi na wakati mmoja tulitembelewa na father Dennis akasema ninasikia moyo unaniambia niadike na fadha Dennis akamwambia adika tu hiyo ni kazi ya Mungu na naendelea na hiyo kazi na kuna vijana wanakuja na ana wasaidia kwa mawazo hata mimi ninawasaidia tunaogea nao nikawaambia mchukue ju, jukumu kwa sababu kwa sababu ni ninyi tunawagojea mfanye kazi na 
wanafanya mzuri hata wana certificate na sasa wako karibu 20 na kitu na tunawaambia edereni na wanakuja kututembelea wakituli wakituliza mawazo na sisi tuna tunaomba Mungu atusaidie tuwa tuone ile tunawaambia na wanaendelea tuna tunafurahi tukiona kesho kutakuwa na watu wa kusaidia kanisa yene ni jambo la maana sana unaposema ya kwamba ulikubali kuja katika pomaeri ili uweze kumpa mkono bwana Godfrey ukamsaidia katika malezi ya watoto ambao sasa hivi wamekuwa wakubwa lakini hata wakati mmeingia useni bado mnaendelea kusaidia vichana katika sehemu hizi na mbona mkawa na moyo huo wewe na bwana mimi nasema ni ma, ni mapedo ya Mwenyezi Mungu si yetu hata ukiacha ukitaka kuasha nasikia mono inakuabia endelea kwa hivyo ni kusema katika imani nyinyi kama bwana na bibi mmetolea katika kueneza injiri na haswa kuwasaidia wale ambao ni wadogo ni changamoto ipi ambayo umekumbana nayo hata wanapenda sana kuja tukae nao hata tuko na msichana mmoja akaniambia mama na, na ni, ni, ni neighbor yangu akaniambia mama kamole mimi saki kuolewa nikamuuliza kwa nini hutaki kuolewa kwa sababu wafulana hakuna wafulana nikamwambia wako si unasoma university si muko nao na wewe wakati wa ruhusa unatusaidia kanisani unasoma unasafisha kanisa na ikiwa unafanya hivyo utaona hata kuna wa fulana we, wa, wengine wanafanya hiyo kazi na bwana yangu akamwambia usiseme utaolewa utaolewa wakati uko shuleni Mungu atakusaidia utaona bwana msuri hapo ikiwa mnaendelea na kazi ya youth hmm? wale mnaenda nao kwa youth utaona mmoja na tukamwambia si unaona msichana wa ndugu yake walikuwa kwa youth na wakawana na wanafanya mzuri maisha maisha mema ni changamoto ambayo ni ya kipekee wakati mwingi unapoona watu wanapojitolea kuyafanya mambo ya ajabu kama haya mimi ni maajabu makuu kwangu kuwaona nyinyi ambao mmefikia uzee wenu mna moyo wa kuwasaidia wale ambao ni wadogo aswa wanahitaji malezi mema changamoto kama hili ndilo ambalo linatusaidia kuangazia kuwaelekeza vichana katika kukuza maadili mema na maadili mema ambayo tungependa kuyafuata aswa yenye tumesikia kutoka kwa banako ni waaminifu katika maisha ili wachiandae kupata wale wa kuwaoa au kuolewa nao tuambie mbona uaminifu ni kitu cha maana katika maisha ya vichana tunawafundisha tuna nasikia bwana wangu akiwaambia wewe kijana kuja hapa na na neno na wewe niliona unatembeaga hivyo hivyo na ujue umekwisha soma hmm? ni nini utarudishia baba yako na mama yako ashana na hayo hmm? kuja kwa kanisa umerejelea kusema kuhusu imani au kuwarudisha vichana kanisani tuliongea na Godfrey kuhusu hilo chambo na wewe sasa hivi unaliangazia ya kwamba kila mlifanyaro kila wakati ni kuwasaidia vichana kurudi kanisani. Mbona unadhani 
imani ni tambo la maana katika maisha ya vitana wetu siku hizi Dio father imani ni kitu cha muhimu sana kwa sababu hata akiona majaribio na na imani kwa roho ya ndani ya roho yake na naoba itamsaidia Teresia umesema mambo mengi na machisorio yenu yanapendeza sana lakini ningependa utuambie ni jambo lipi ambalo lilikupendeza na uchana wako na changamoto gani ulioipata katika uchana wako Wakati nilikuwa mdogo nilikuwa napenda sana kwenda kanisani na wakati nilikuwa nikienda kwa kanisa nina nilimwambia fadha alikuwa anaitwa fadha binoro mimi ninashikia kwa moyo yangu nataka kuingia kwa kamera iti akani akaniambia eda wa sister sasa nikamwambia mimi ninataka tapete sana kuwa msichana wa kamera iti akanambia mzuri utaingia na kila jumapili nili akaniambia uje mapema ushukue medali na wewe ndiwe uta, utawapa wale wengine wa kamera iti nilienda asubuhi sana ili ni shukue hiyo na ilikuwa shagamoto nili nili, nili, nili wa 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 wa, wa, wa fulana hata wasichana waniniita yule ni wa kamera iti usi usiogee naye hataki kuogea na mtu akienda anachukua rusali ni wa kamera iti lakini hawakuwa wakisema kwa uzuri <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> eh? uh-huh. hata wakati wa leo uh-huh. Mimi niko na mitali father Scapula. hata ya ka, e, e, scapula uh-huh. oh. si mm-hmm. sitaki kutoa niko uh-huh. hapa nitakuonyesha mm? uh-huh. niko nazo hata uki, ukiona siedi kwa mkutano mimi siwezi kulala hata siku moja bado sitajisema maobi ya kamera iti hata nimwambia msichana yangu kuja wona ni hii alininunulia hii kamwambia mimi siwezi kutoa kwa sababu nilijia nikiwa mdo, mdogo naenda kuendelea hata ukiniona siendi kwa mkutano mimi najua roho yangu niko mkamera iti na naomba hayo pa ni, ni mungu anisaidie niendelee mpaka wakufa basi hilo umelisikia mm. na tuachue ya kwamba mapadri wa konsorata walipatiwa ruhusa rasmi na padri wa kameri kutoka Roma ili kuanzisha mafundisho ya walei kuwa wa kameri sasa hivi umesikia mama tangu akiwa mtoto akawa ni mmoja wa walei wa kameri na ameishi hayo maisha hata wakati aliingia utawa akatoka aendelea kuishi akiwa amefaa skapirari yake na kwa wale ambao wajui skapira ni ile ishara mama Maria aliyetoa kuwa mtakatifu Simon Stock akiahidi ya kwamba atakaye ifaa hii nguo na uaminifu na baada ya kifo chake atapata kuona utukufu wa, wa mbinguni ili ndilo ambalo naliishi kila siku na tunaendelea kumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu ya kwamba imani hiyo uliyoipokea ukiwa mdogo unaendelea kuishi. Usitoe kwa sababu hata sisi tunayo tunaendelea kuombea Mungu akulinde na aswa baraka ya Mama Maria anayetukinga sisi wote tunaoishi tukimtegemea. Sasa tuambie kapra tumalize. Utatuambia lile ambalo ulipatana nalo ambalo lilikuwa ni ngumu katika maisha yako ya uchana. <laughs> Mimi unaniona hapa. Nilikijana nili na nikasema ni, ni nataka kuolewa. 
na baba yangu yule kijana akileta ulinzi baba yangu akasema nitashukua hii ulinzi lakini nitapeleka nita kwa banki nitakutolea ikiwa mingi kwa sababu huyu msichana yangu ninaona si wa kuolewa huyu mama yangu akakasirika sana akasema ataniua baba yangu akasema akamwambia achana na yeye ni mugu alimuita alimuita na yule akaniuliza unaenda wapi ikiwa ni msichana ni mfalme ni mfalme mwingine mimi nitamuua hapana mimi nataka kwenda kwa utawa na nikaenda mimi sijui ni nini ilitokea lakini mapadri wa konsolata waliniambia hapo ulikuwa kwa kusomeshwa kwa sababu kasi yako ni mingi nje na hapale huwezi kufanya hivyo yako iko katika watu changamoto aliyokuwa nayo mama Teresa ni kwamba wakati alipokuwa anatamani kuolewa baba akakataa na wakati alipoingia katika maisha ya utawa amesema ajui ni kipi kilichofanyika lakini wakati alipotoka akukata tamaa akarudi akachua ya kwamba ataendelea kumtumikia Mwenyezi Mungu na tunakushukuru kwa kutokata tamaa na yale ambayo umeyafanya katika maisha ongereni ukapatana na umewe umemsaidia na unaendelea kusaidia wengi sasa tu kuomba uwaambie vichana pale nje yale ambayo yanawakumba ungewaelezea nini katika maisha yao e, ninaomba Mungu anisaidie kwa sababu nina, kuna vijana vingine wananitebelea wakiniuliza niwaabie watafa, watafanyaje na Mungu ananisaidia na waabia uwe uskate tamaa uombe Mungu na atakusaidia Mungu atakusaidia ufuate wito wako Asanteni sana mama Teresa kwa kuwa umekuwa kweli msaidizi katika familia yako hata jamii yako tuendelee kuombea tena saidi maombezi ya mama Maria aliyekuongoza katika maisha yako ya Ukristo na tunavyoendelea kuwaambia vichana ya kwamba hakuna lolote litakalofanyika katika maisha ni mwako ili uweze kuwa na sababu ya kukata tamaa lakini unapomtumainia Mwenyezi Mungu yote ambayo hata yakiwa ni magumu yanawezekana kulingana na mapenzi yake usife moyo Chua ya kwamba kuna watu wengi wanapenda kukushauri. Umepata mmoja hapa katika uzee wake ana moyo wa kusikiliza na tamaa ya kuendelea kuongeresha wale ambao wangetaka kuyafanya mambo makuu katika maisha yao. Tuwatarajie hata wewe unapoendelea kukua utakuwa na moyo huo. Tumeyapokea kutoka kwa Teresa na Godfrey Tuatarachia ukichagua maisha ya ndoa ndoa yenu tafarikiwa muweze kuyafanya yote kwa mapendo mengi na ulinzi wake mama Maria Asanteni sana tuatarachia kuwaleta tena siku nyingine Mungu akubariki Asante sana Father Dennis Mungu akubariki Asante, Asante.